From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Our top story, the Fairbanks man charged with murder of Todd Nozel pled not guilty in the Fairbanks Superior Court earlier this afternoon. 23-year-old Yelizy Campbell was taken into custody last week after an eight-month investigation. According to police reports, Nozel was found shot to death in the dike near Tananaw River in April of 2015. There were over 15 supporters in the courtroom wearing Todd Nozel remembrance shirts and buttons. According to family and friends, Nozel and Campbell had been acquaintances and even worked for the same company. Those close to Nozel ha ha don't have any idea what events occurred leading up to his death or who's at fault, but they say they are comforted knowing that justice is being handled. I'm glad that we're actually doing something, not just my f for the family, not just for my friends, but actually for this community and letting us know that none that we're done with this nonsense. Fairbanks is a place where we want our kids to grow up and things like this just can't happen no more. And if it's willing to happen, we're going to find you and hope uh, things are brought to justice. Justice is finally served and it's, it feels like a lot of relief out of me. I don't, I mean, I'm pretty sure out of everybody too. A Fairbanks man indicted by a federal grand jury in connection with a murder for hire plot is on trial this week in U.S. District Court. 56 year old Guy Menino is accused of soliciting the murder of five people. One of the targets was reportedly a witness in a criminal case against him, while the other four were federal officers. Menino had previously been charged with concealing bankruptcy assets and possessing illegal weapons. A witness in that case was the one Menino allegedly tried to hire a hitman to kill. Menino is already serving a three-year prison term in connection with a different case. The superintendent of the Fairbanks North Star Borough School District presented her upcoming year's proposed budget to the Fairbanks Board of Education last night. Ryan Grimes has the story. Superintendent Karen Gaborik recommended that 19 full-time and part-time employees should be hired for the next school year. Our projection for next year is up 161 students. So with that um, increased projection comes increased funding. So the money follows the kids in those cases. So, you know, you need more teachers to serve more students. So thus the increase of 10 teachers to the classroom. Among the 10 teacher positions recommended, five will be specifically dedicated to teaching at five new e-learning labs at local high schools next year. The e-learning center will allow us to have many students across the district taking one class, for example. So uh, even if you add one teacher to teach it, if you can teach a class in five different high schools, it's actually a move to economize. I wish these were the numbers we were going to be working with and uh, all would be well. I don't think they are necessarily. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. School board member Sue Hole says she has doubts implementing many of the administration's recommendations on a budget based off of inconclusive numbers from the governor. O'Brien agrees. They're not quantified, so this is probably the high water mark of the amount of money we're going to have to spend. O'Brien says if school funding is further reduced by state and local governments, the board will prioritize cuts in the proposed budget. Keeping teachers in front of students is the number one priority. So as in past years, we'll look to the administration and other sorts of external costs to cut first. The school board will host its next budget work session at the school district administrative center on February 15th. This is Ryan Grimes reporting. And when we come back, the North Pole City Council met last night and determined fees regarding the sale and cultivation of marijuana. Also in this week's health report, Monty Bowen will report on how new dietary guidelines have been released by the federal government. These stories and more when we return, stay with us. And welcome back. Interior energy issues took center stage at the Greater Fairbanks Chamber of Commerce luncheon earlier today. Golden Valley Electric Association President Corey Borgeson updated local business leaders on key GVEA developments and projections. Borgeson says the organization is decreasing its dependence on natural gas for fuel and using coal slightly more. GVEA is operating at a $60 million drop in revenues since 2012. Borgeson says that's actually a good thing, primarily due to the fact that energy provider hasn't had to charge customers as much for its services. The electrical company announced it recently inked a deal with Petrostar to provide light fuel, which could cut GVEA costs up to 40 percent. Borgeson says contractual off-ramps exist to allow the utility company to support the Interior Energy Project. 
we proposed to the Interior Energy folks that we would take what we call summer gas, or 0.6 BCF of gas a year. Um, and the thought on that is, is that in the summer, when we don't have, when aren't heating our houses and you're really using natural gas, the plants will be fairly idle. And the trucks that we have for trucking uh, won't be moving. So if we build up the demand in the summer, it levels it out and it helps the project. The North Pole City Council passed two marijuana-related ordinances last night. One sets an annual fee of $1,000 for a retail vendor and $500 annual fees for cultivation, manufacturing and testing facilities to operate within the city limits. The council also passed a measure that establishes a 6% tax on the sale of marijuana and cannabis products that contain THC, the psychoactive ingredient of the plant. The measure also establishes a 6% wholesale tax on such products brought into the city for retail distribution. Marijuana cultivated within the city would be exempt from the excise tax. Former North Pole Mayor yeah, and State Representative Doug Isaacson provided the only public testimony. He says the marijuana industry does not comply with the city's theme and is so premature pending the final approval of the city's strategic plan. The Drugs in the city, even though legal, would be a good idea. It just confuses the idea that we're the spirit of Christmas when the smoke of marijuana is in the air. If we chose not to allow it, then they would set up shop immediately outside our city limits. And then there would be no way for us to recoup our expenses or have, while still having to maintain and police any situation that might happen. The federal government has released new dietary guidelines. Monty Bowen has details now in this week's Health Report. The 2015 through 2020 Dietary Guidelines for Americans is released every five years and is designed to be the nation's resource for evidence-based nutrition recommendations. However, Stephen Nissen, a medical doctor and chair of cardiovascular medicine at Cleveland Clinic, said the guidelines fall short. The guidelines do a not a very good job of telling us the quality of the scientific evidence backing up the claims that are made. And I think that's a, a, a failing of the guidelines to, to be clear about the quality of the science. Preliminary guidelines released in 2015 noted that cholesterol was not a dietary concern, but the new guidelines recommend Americans eat as little cholesterol as possible. We don't have the evidence we need to make sound recommendations. And so we have guidelines like this one that are really uh, providing uh, broad guesses about what makes sense. For the first time, the guidelines suggest added sugar be limited to no more than 10% of calories each day. Sugared soft drinks clearly have got a bad name and they probably should. Uh, they do seem to lead to obesity and, and diabetes. And so limiting simple sugars that's kind of a no-brainer. Eating plenty of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, low-fat dairy, lean protein, and oils also are emphasized in the recommendations. This is Monty Bowen reporting. The Health Report is brought to you by the Ear, Nose, and Throat Clinic, located in the Medical Dental Arts Building, and by Interior Women's Health, located on 1626 30th Avenue. I know how I can get myself to eat more fruits and vegetables. How? Make them taste like a donut or a pizza. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I'm craving pizza <laughs> after watching that. <laughs> <laughs> right now, you're right, exactly. All right, Joe Cook is up next with sports. He catches up with the rifle team in today's Nana Corner. And you don't want to miss a very rare basketball play as Joe recaps high school sports. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back, Interior Sports fans. Joe Cook here with your local Tuesday sportscast. North Pole's Phoenix Copley is headed back to the NHL for a second time. Yesterday was announced that the AHL Chicago Wolves goalie was called up to the St. Louis Blues. The transaction was completed on Sunday. Copley is 11, 11 and 1 in 25 games for the Wolves, saving at 90%. Last season with the Hershey Bears, he went 17, 4 and 3, and he had three shutouts. Copley and Michigan Tech product was called up to the Washington Capitals last January. Former WCHA foes are teammates. Former Nanak Colton Pareko is second among rookie defensemen with 19 points, and Copley joins him in St. Louis. 
The Natick Rifle team travels to Texas this week for conference championships, but this team focuses on numbers and total scores rather than wins and losses. Here's more. In sports, most of us regard success in wins and losses. Alaska is 3-2 and two this year, and you might say that's okay, but the Nanooks are more concerned about what numbers they are shooting rather than the final outcome in the win and loss column. That's usually the way we look at it, whether or not it's, it's going to be um, you know, a big win or a big loss it isn't too much the focus. The, the focus is on championships, so we're looking for numbers to keep pushing ourselves, and it, it helps keep us focused on ourselves as opposed to the other teams out there. They've shot over 4,700, which is a good score, but it's happened once. With Nationals in March, the Nooks are preparing for a key week in their season. This weekend is the Patriot Rifle Conference Championships. The PRC enters its third year, but Alaska has won back-to-back -back titles. But we're going in there to beat ourselves. We're going in there to beat each other on the team, uh, to push each other. Those other teams, they're kind of, they're just there, you know. If we do good, that's good. If we don't do good, we learn from it. Alaska is ranked number five in the country, which is one of their lowest ranks at this point of the season in the last couple of years. They might be overlooked as rival West Virginia is number one, followed by Murray State, Kentucky, and TCU, but they're embracing the underdog role. If we can kind of get that in our own head, then that takes off a lot of pressure, and, and that's when people kind of come out and, and step up and have phenomenal days. Let people worry about themselves and put the pressure on themselves because they've all been battling. We know that we can shoot that well, and so if we can go in and just have that confidence and not have to worry about overachieving, then yeah, that's exactly where I'd like it to be going into there. UAF will be on the line against number 13 Nevada this Thursday before the conference championships this Saturday and Sunday in Fort Worth, Texas. Joe Cook reporting. Nanook Corner, brought to you by Sports Medicine Fairbanks. And a former Nanook skier has a career weekend in Lake Placid, New York at the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Association Super Tour. David Norris of Fairbanks won Saturday Sprint and Sunday's 10K race. Now, these are his first two wins ever on the Super Tour. His best finish was seventh before this past weekend. Norris, who skis for APU, won the 10K in 28 minutes, 26 seconds. Other notables include former Nook Lex Trennan, who placed third, and Becca Royalbaugh, also of Fairbanks and APU, placing sixth in the women's 10K. And at the end of Sunday's ADMA Anime at Challenge Series, Jennifer Probert Earhart was in the winner's circle again. She won the 8, 10 dog, and 4 dog class in the third race of the series. She beat her husband Carl Earhart by a minute in the 4 dog 6.2 mile race and won the 12.5 mile 8, 10 dog race in 38 minutes, 36 seconds over Amy Dunlap. Don Brown won the 6 dog 8 mile race in 23.44. And Nikki Sayo won the 16 dog open class in 52.37, while Greg York won the 6.2 mile ski drawer title in 19.57. And in high school basketball, a peculiar thing happened Saturday at Lathrop High School. The Malamutes hosted the Thunder Mountain Falcons, and it was a seesaw battle. Lathrop went up by two, going into the fourth quarter, led by Jeremiah Handy's 12 points. But Thunder Mountain rallied and led 50 to 48 with two seconds left. Now Lathrop was ready to foul the Falcons on an inbounds play, but the Falcons caught Lathrop off guard by passing it to another player who ran from in to out of bounds. The Falcons got the ball in. They would win 50 to 48 as fans booed in disgust, but it's a legal play. Well, you know, understand that they're going to deny all the passes in bounds. I wanted to get it a side pass so that we could get the ball in bounds off of a cutter. And it's a legal play. I mean, you can make a pass out of bounds. You still have five seconds. And uh, so that created an opening for my point guard to crash in bounds. So that's what we wanted to do. So I don't think the crowd was too happy, but it worked. And it did. You don't see that every day. In other weekend games, the Monroe Rams stopped a two-game skid on the road with a 71-55 win over Grace Christian. Ryan Brantley had 20 to lead the Rams, and Trevor Osborne scored a game-high 30 points for the Grizzlies. And in the girls' game, Grace won 43-29 over Monroe. Andy Vanderweed had game-high 18 points, while Maha Dukovic led Monroe with 9. At Hutchison, the Delta Junction Huskies beat the Hawks 63-40, powered by Martise Blankenship's game-high 22 points. Xavier Udebe had 10 points in his day debut for the Hawks. Taya Titus also scored 22 points to lead Hutchison girls to a 60 to 13 win over Delta in the split. And that'll do it for sports tonight. Mike Schultz is up next with weather and as always we'll catch you next time. Hey everyone welcome back into weather for a Tuesday night. Mike Schultz with you once again and another beautiful day across the interior. Lots of sunshine and it's not going to stop. We're looking at this trend to continue. In fact tonight we'll be talking about another cold night but warmer in the hills. 
there's an inversion going on. And once again, we have clear skies, maybe some auroras. I didn't see any last night, but they might have been around early this morning. And also, once again, air quality is still not too good. And speaking of air quality, we have another alert in effect for the uh, Fairbanks and North Pole areas. It's a stage one, moderate conditions right now. And North Pole is at stage three, unhealthy. And this effect is in, this alert is in effect until 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, so keep that in mind. On the satellite and radar, not a whole lot going on. There are some clouds moving up from the south, but this high pressure is so strong, it's just going to squash it down and keep it from getting anywhere close to us. So we're just looking at basically clear to just scattered high clouds, and that's about it. Elsewhere across the uh, state, Ketchikan uh, looking at 41 degrees, some showers, 33, and just partly cloudy skies at Juneau. Anchorage also partly cloudy skies with their high temperature of 19. Kodiak, some scattered showers in 37. Cloudy skies along the Aleutian chain with Cold Bay at 34. Over around uh, Bethel, 19 degrees for their high day, but cooler in Nome at 17. And across the uh, North Slope, the colder air has moved back in. Barrow, 10 degrees below zero and 18 below at Fort Yukon, so the cold air is really definitely to the north of us. On the uh, satellite and radar, you can see, again, not a whole lot going on, on the west coast, just some mid-level cloudiness for the most part, but the storm we were talking about last night has really gathered strength and become not only a blizzard in the northern sections in the mid, mid part of the country, but down to the south, it's spawning tornadoes. A huge tornado reported in Alabama this afternoon and more along this frontal boundary here, really well defined. And as far as the uh, thunderstorms and severe weather, uh, the greatest risk, as you can see, Mississippi and Alabama tonight, as this system slowly moves to the east, the jet stream helping to uh, push that along. And to the north, it's colder. And of course, you have lots of snow there in uh, any, any places from Iowa, Nebraska, right on back into Colorado. Now, the jet stream is uh, not going to be really that that obvious for the next few days because it's just basically just kind of meandering around. So no real organized storms expected over in any part of the country later on this week. Just a, a few snow showers across the Great Lakes. Okay, time once again for our kids' weather. And all this week we're talking with the kids from University of Park Elementary School. But tonight we have a young lady with a very nice picture she's drawn. Hi, I'm Nyla. I, I am in Miss Ross' third grade class at University Park. This is my weather picture of a cloud with lightning and, and a storm because I really, really like when the storms go because I like when the power goes out. And it's just, I, it was easy. I drew the cloud, then I did the lightning bolt, and then I did the rain. Thanks, nice picture, Nyla. And again, thanks to Mount McKinley Bank for sponsoring our kids' weather. Tomorrow night, another young man will be here. We'll uh, asking a, or be asking a question about lightning in the wintertime. We'll tell you about that. You'll find it pretty interesting. Okay, as far as our forecast for tomorrow for the northern sections, sunshine returns to the north slope. Lots of sunshine. Also at Nome and Fort Yukon, so very nice weather there. The same can be said for the interior. A lot of sunshine. Just a few scattered high clouds and temperatures slowly working their way back up again. 18 degrees at Haiti. Over southeast Alaska, just the opposite. We've got uh, rain and snow for Juneau and more rain likely for Ketchikan, so that's the worst weather in the state. Over to the uh, west and southwest part of the state, rainy conditions at Cold Bay, but just mostly cloudy skies in Bethel and scattered clouds for Kodiak Island. And down around the Anchorage Bowl, it looks like uh, partly cloudy skies for Anchorage with rain and snow showers in Homer and Valdez. Out the airport right now, clear skies, like I said before, and our temperature is exactly zero. The high today, four above, the low last night, 16 below. The record high, 43, that was in 1981, 58 below in 1993. Your sunrise and sunset over seven hours of daylight, a gain of six minutes from yesterday. And our forecast for tonight, mostly clear skies, but again, warmer in the hills, 16 below for the overnight low. Tomorrow's forecast, another day with lots of sunshine, and a little warmer, 7 degrees. And the extended forecast, as you can see here, temperatures really consistent all the way across the board, 15 to 16 degrees above. Overnight lows will also be very consistent right around oh, 0 to 5 above. And our picture for tonight, another beautiful sunset. This one sent in by Ann Mills, the Alaska Range Sunset uh, with the guiding lights coming through the, the passes there. Very nice. And as always, if you have a photograph to share, send it to photos at ktvf11.com.
Okay, thank you, Mike. We've got to get this in real quick. Before we go, KTVF is having another watch and win contest running every night during the Fairbanks Evening News and News Center Final. That's right, Darrell. Hey, Darrell, it's your chance to win 400 gallons of heating fuel from Alaska Fuels. Just look for the Alaska Fuels truck sometime during one of the newscasts. And go to our website at webcenter11.com, find the contest section, and enter for a chance to win. Good luck. All right, and from all of us here at the News Center, have a great night. Good night.